meeting is being recorded. Yeah, I've tried to click on it, but nothing has happened. Yes, okay, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Again. Good afternoon. Yeah. I think I got kicked off the um, moment um, temporarily. Um, so I had to get um, Mr. Pratt to put me back on. Just get, give me a sec second while I am um, back. Mm -hmm. yeah, Kendrick, you said that you got it. You got it to open? I don't know. No, I said I tried clicking on it, but nothing happened. So I guess I'll find out later. Yeah, I'm back on. Give me a moment, please. All right, sir. Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Just give, just give me a moment. I, I think I got knocked off for some reason or the other. Um, just give me a moment to get my stuff back on. BTC. Good afternoon. Can, can everyone um, see the PowerPoint presentation and hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. Okay. All righty. Just give me give, give, give me a minute. One more minute, please. Thanks. Okay, um, I'm back, and I think I'm ready to I'm ready to get moving. So, okay. So everyone said they can see this, this the the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. So, um, so tonight we're going to be um, reviewing the, the homework um, assignment number two. Um, then we'll do a quick review of the previous lesson, and then we we'll get into um, tonight's lesson. So, if you, uh, you Mr. Mr. Nardis, sure. yes, go ahead. Uh, I tried clicking on the yellow. Uh, was I able to see exactly what the grade was? Oh, um, any, anyone else had a problem? Hello, anyone else had a problem? Um, it was? Yes, I am not able to access it. Okay, all right. So, um, all right, I'll have to revisit that and um, I'm, I'm re re resend it. 
Um, okay, but let's let's go through the um, the, the questions and um, uh, and uh, let me let me just say the the the, the homework was was well done. Um, uh, there were there were high score scores from everyone on it. Um, so uh, we should get we should get through going through it very fairly quickly. Okay. Let's look at um look at the homework. So we're looking at true or false first. So question number one was: Banks need to properly assess the risk of each borrower in order to minimize bad debts and ensure the banks protect the bank's image, to price loans correctly and to protect the shareholder's interest. That was A, true, okay? The second one was B, false. Um, what you can do is um, just um, make a notation of um, anything that you got wrong, just put the, make sure you um, put the, um, Draw down what the correct answer is. And um, uh, if you have any questions, um, you can email me um, on it and um, we'll go from there. So <clears throat> again, one is A, true. Um, two is B, false. Three is A, true. Four, is A as well, true. Five is B, false. Six is B, false. Seven is A, true. Eight is A, true. Nine is A or true. 10 is B, false. 11 is B as well, false. 12 is A or true. And 13 is A, which is true, okay? Any questions on, on, on any of those? Everyone, everyone got heard the correct answers, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next section, which is multiple choice. Okay. Um, question one was A. Question two is E. Question three is also E. Question four is C. Question five is F. Question six is D as in dog. Eight is B as in boy. Nine is C, 10 is also C, and 11 is E. Okay. All right, so um, every, everyone, um, Jot it down. If they got anything wrong in that section, they got the correct answers down, right? Mr. Nottage, can you repeat um, number seven and eight for me, please? Seven and eight. Okay. Seven is D as in dog, which was all of the above. And eight was B as in boy facilitates international trade and guarantees payment for exporters. Got it?
Did, did, you, did you get them for seven and eight? D as in dog for seven and B as in boy for eight. I got it. Okay, thank you. All right, so. Um, okay, so let's go to fill in the blank. Okay. So number one, Banks lend because interest income from loans represents the primary source of revenue for the bank. Okay, it's important that you say primary source of revenue for the bank. So interest income um, from loans represents the primary source of revenue for the bank. And the question two, you can either use corporation or limited company. Question number two is corporation or limited company. Three, a company's articles and memorandum of association is known as its, as its borrowing power. It's borrowing power. It lets you know that they have the power to borrow. Question four, there are four main reasons why businesses borrow. And it gave you one of the four and it says list any one other reason. So you can either have to purchase highly priced items or to fund a project of a business expansion or unable to obtain credit from suppliers. So the other three are, again, to purchase highly priced items, to fund a project or for business expansion, and the third, sorry, unable to obtain credit from, from suppliers. Question five. Should be origination. Okay, so the four, the four pillars are origination, underwrite, underwriting, administration, and servicing. So number five is origination. Six, booking the facility falls into administration. Booking the facility falls into administration. Taking of a loan application, falls into origination. Taking the application falls into origination. That's your branches, the sales section. Eight, documenting compliance or non-compliance is the responsibility of the administration functional area. Documenting compliance and or non-compliance is the responsibility of the administration functional area. Okay, you got those? Yes, sir. Okay, so again, I will, um, for those of you who, who, who didn't see the scores, I'll have to, um, uh, resend those. I probably won't get to that until tomorrow. Okay. So, okay. Um, so let's move on to just doing a little review of um, last class. Um, we can be um, looked at um, sources of credit history, which was the last section in um, credit of payment history. And we said that you can get, uh, collect sources of, um, of history, um, credit from existing loans, um, items for banks, insurance companies, credit unions, um, private loans from um, private individuals or in-store or in-house credit. Then there was credit cards and also life insurance policies, either again, um, uh, loans against those policies, 
see how they were paid, or the premium payments. Um, savings accounts or any other investment accounts, again, regular um, deposits showing to your savings accounts or in the case of um, TDs, um, monthly rollovers, um, or even quarterly run rollovers if you have a, 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 a year's uh, supply of TDs, so that'll be at least four. You'll be able to see some of the savings habits, which means the person has a propensity to save. They have the discipline um, to do this on their own. So um, that's um, kind of being able to, to tell that a person has um, a great um, um, credit history, quote unquote. Then of course, there's utility bills, um, copies of the, the um, last three months, at least, the, um, the most recent three months bills. So financial institutions may ask you to bring in six, but um, you shouldn't look any, at, um, at anything less than three, three months, the, the most recent three months. Then of course, there's equity built up in the property. For example, when you met a person that um, began to put the foundation on a property, you know, cleared it down, um, poured uh, the, um, the foundation and then started to block it up. Uh, then there's also school fees. Uh, these can be uh, usually tertiary institutions or sometimes um, uh, parents may pay for their, their children's um, uh, private school fees on, 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 on a monthly basis or whatever it is. Then we have an arrangement with the school to, to pay on a monthly basis. So the object is to try to, if the person does not have an existing loan or past loan that can give you history or a credit card, you want to find um, some indication that the person um, will be a good risk. That either they will, they will pay on their own as in the case of life insurance, premium payments, or savings accounts, or investment accounts, or they, um, or in terms of uh, developing a, a undeveloped or vacant property, or whether um, or not uh, you can look at utility bills, school fees, um, and other sources of um, uh, of payments where, these, where people have to make payments um, because of uh, commitments. So the, the whole idea is not to limit it to just existing loans or past loans of the, of the client, okay? So there, there are other means of, of, of finding, um, of assessing a person's character through um, credit or payment history. Then after that, we looked um, uh, into uh, bank statements or loan statements. And we uh, went through the two types. Um, we, look, we looked at the, the, um, uh, the consumer loan and we looked at the mortgage loan. But before we got into that, we looked at um, how some of the banks, there was a chart that we looked at how some of the banks uh, look at their payment histories. And so we said that while all banks record the number and frequency of late payments for each client in its database, um, the, the, there's some commonality um, in, in sections because they have to report to the central bank. So it says that um, this information is displayed in the loan summary section for, um, for each account and can be seen when requests for loan printouts have been requested and provided. So again, some banks may display the late payment um, or delinquency information in different ways. And then we start counting delinquencies from different thresholds. Some start complete, completing it from day three, day six, day five, day 11, day 10. Some even start counting it from day one. So it varies from financial institution to financial institution. And then um, we said that it could be this, uh, displayed as numbered cycles, where each cycle represents a specified period, but it may be shown using the specified delinquency period, um, such as um, 
you know, one to 30 days or 10 to 30 days as the case may be. And so we looked at the chart and the chart um, of several banks, which may have changed since 2006. Um, but if you look at Commonwealth Bank, Commonwealth Bank um, used cycles. Um, so they had cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, four, five, six. However, um, their, their cycles represented um, um, a, a, a day span. So when it's, so cycle one was six days late to 14 days late, cycle two was 15 to 29 and so on. Uh, the other um, financial institutions, uh, they um, actually uh, used um, delinquency um, specified periods, right? So uh, num uh, number of days. So, um, so for uh, Fidelity, First Caribbean, Finco, Royal Bank, S, um, Scotia Bank, um, they used the actual um, dates. So, for example, of um, uh, Fidelity, um, who had the most number of buckets or whatever you call them, or cycles, um, they started from five to nine days, 10 to 14 days, 15 to 29. Whereas um, the other financial institutions had two or even one. Um, those, those periods, those time periods captured in um, one or two. So in the case of First Caribbean, Finco, they had two for that first period. Um, RBC and Scotia Bank had one. So one to 30 days was in the case of Royal Bank, um, 11 to 30 days in the case of Scotia Bank and going on. And again, You'll see some commonality, particularly when you look at um, going at from Commonwealth Bank from cycle three, um, looking at cycle three down that, that column, you'll see um, 30 to 59 days for them, uh, Fidelity 30 to 59 days, First Caribbean 30 to 59 days, um, until you get to Royal Bank, they do 31 to 59, and then Scotia Bank 31 to 60 days. And the reason why there's some similarities um, from particularly from cycle three, if you're looking at a Commonwealth Bank cycle four, um, and then cycle five and over, is because the central bank, um, all these financial institutions have to report um, to uh, the central bank on uh, certain cycles. So for example, the first group will be anywhere from day one to day 30, day um, 30 or 31 uh, to day 59 or, or 60, and day 60 or 61 to um, day 90. And then of course there's 90 days and over, okay? So we um, looked at the case, um, began to look at the case study, and we looked at the um, consumer personal loan statement, and we went we we went through the different um, rows and columns. We went by rows and columns. Um, we said that this was the, the new um, car loan that was in Martin Rolls' name only. We looked down at the payment history. We saw that there was absolutely no no late payments there. We also said um, sometimes these uh, statements would let us know um, the, the mode of payment, whether um, it's by salary deduction or over the counter or salary assignment or however the payment um, the payment is, okay? Or um, in the past, it used to, even used to be by post dated checks in the past. But that is something that is gonna fade away and um, uh, um, in, in the next year or two. The central bank has targeted to, to, to move away from um, move away from using checks. So we see that um, the payment history for for Mr. Roll um, there was zero in all of the categories: one to thirty days, thirty-one to fifty-nine, sixty days, eighty-nine, ninety to one hundred and seventy-nine, one eighty plus. There were um, absolutely no no payments, and this year this this loan. Um, was booked two years ago, and um, for it to have no payments late um, is excellent payment history. 
um, going over a period of two years. And um, again, you know, we're not told more. It could be by, because of salary reduction. Um, we, we, we are not told that. And if it isn't by salary reduction, even more kudos um, to Mr. To, to Martin Rowe. In any event, we have a unblemished credit, um, credit uh, payment history here for these two years for Mr. Martin Rowe on this new car loan. Then we looked at um, the mortgage loan, which is in both their names. And we said the loan type, this was a conventional residential mortgage, um, which means it's the house that they live in more than likely. They've had this from 16 years ago. So uh, we have this particular, um, this particular statement differs from the consumer loan is that there were two sections that dealt with pay, um, late payment history. The first was an overall, which started from the beginning of the loan from 16 years ago. And the second one um, was year to date. So just for the last 12 months, the previous 12 months, okay. And we saw that uh, the payment history from year to date, um, there, there was some delinquency uh, but the, the account never went non-performing, okay? So when an account gets 91 days and over, um, it becomes non-performing. Uh, that means that no interest is, take, is taken. Um, the bank doesn't take any interest into profit, okay? So up to 89 days, um, and some institutions, even up to 90 days, they, they'll take interest. But once it hits that 91 days, um, it is definitely non-performing. And for some banks, it's 90 days when it goes non-performing. So again, it's just a slight difference between some of the financial institutions. Some of them start from 90 days saying it's non-performing. Some say um, 91 days and over is not performing. Okay. Um, then of course the late, and we, we did say that that was for, for, for 16 years, that was good. Okay, that was a good payment history. And if it was my salary reduction, um, it means something, there was, there was probably some, some hiccup. Um, and again, if they were paying over the counter and still paying over the counter, um, I wouldn't fault them for, for this type of history. This, this, this is a decent history, notwithstanding that they had um, some payments that was too good into three months uh, past you. And then of course, the year-to-date history, um, the past 12 months, there were no loans that were late. Um, again, um, a lot of banks, they would, would say that if you've had any delinquency in the past, some banks say that if you've had six consecutive payments, um, some banks would say if you had 12 consecutive payments that were not missed, um, your, your delinquency history was cured or you, you had a, a good payment history. Again, it, it, it depends on what your what, what what the policy of your financial institution is. But I would certainly say, you know, after 12 months of paying on time and you have no delinquency, um, you know, uh, the year data history on this is excellent. Okay. Any questions or not before I move on to, to the review of net worth? Okay, so um, net worth we said re refers to a client's pool of assets, less their liabilities. Um, that is what they own, and you subtract what they owe. So the total of what they own, the value of the total of what they own, less the, the value, the, to the, the total value um, of uh, those debts that they owe. So you subtract those debts from um, the total assets and that will give you um, the net worth. And if you recall from the bank statements, um, they had a list of assets on, on the, to the left and the liabilities on the, on the right on those statement of affairs, um, just as it appears in um, uh, accounting financial statements, right? So, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the balance sheet, so you have your assets, your liabilities, the difference between those two is, is the net worth or owner's equity. 
Um, there is a, you should have an equivalent of at least three months expenses. Uh, most um, wealth um, advisors or financial advisors would say a minimum of three months expenses. Um, there are some others who will say three months um, salary, not just the expenses, but three months salary. And then there are others who say six months expenses or six months um, salary as a, as a minimum invested for as, as your emergency fund. But certainly um, the least amount that you should, should, should keep um, is uh, three months uh, worth of expenses, okay? Then we said uh, good net worth indicates um, a person's ability to save or pay down um, loan debt. Okay, and uh, then we looked at some questions to ask. And some of those questions to ask is where does net worth come from? And most of uh, a person's uh, net worth will actually come from, um, will, will come from uh, uh, real estate. Okay, and then you'll see some invested savings, you know, um, many of the mutual funds or actual savings accounts or whatever, okay? And then we looked at is net worth reasonable for the client's age and life style? And we had a little discussion on that. And I related the, the incident of uh, uh, that I experienced uh, once about the um, young man who came in to, to borrow the $50,000 to complete some condos and the, um, there, there was some suspicions uh, surrounding it. And um, I end up reporting it to the to our MLRO for them to, to deal with um, going forward. The next uh, question to ask is, has network been increasing or decreasing? Um, and then of course we then ask, how liquid is this net worth? Has the person or persons built um, a liquid fund to weather any unexpected emergencies? And that goes back to um, that, that goes back to um, that point where we said should they they should have equivalent at least three months expenses to invest in liquid assets. Okay. So any questions on that? Because we can move to today's lesson. Uh Okay, so this is what I want us to do. Um, I want you to turn to page 101 in your, um, in your book. That should be in the back of your book. We're gonna do a, a net worth um, exercise. And we're gonna apply what we use on net worth for Martin and Sherry rule are uh, in in class case study. So everyone is on page 101. I am sir. Okay. And you'll also have to um yes. you also have to have your, your finger on page 105. Okay. So um, we're looking at pages 101 and 105. We're going to go through the net worth. Okay. So, um, the case study says Martin and Sherry Rule, ages 40 and 37 respectively, need to borrow $30,000 for the first year of their daughter's college costs. They have approached their primary bank, banker, RBC, for assistance, and the bank has agreed to do the loan, which will be payable at $340 monthly. Among the role's fixed expenses are a mortgage at RBC Finco, 
taken out 16 years ago. And remember, we looked at that state, we, look, we looked at that, um, that, that statement, right? Um, over the residence in Eastwood, on which they are paying $975 monthly, and an RBC car loan on which they are paying $530 monthly. We also looked at that. Additionally, they have two credit cards. Now, I, I must say that while the, while the car loan is only in the name of Martin Roll, when they're doing a statement of affairs, you have to include it in their joint statement of affairs, even though it's only in one person's name, okay? Additionally, they have two credit cards, one at RBC with a $4,000 limit that has an outstanding balance of $2,395, and the other at First Caribbean International Bank that has a $3,200 limit and an outstanding balance of $50. Martin has been working at Atlantis for the past 15 years and currently earns a base salary of $450 weekly and gratuity of $300 weekly. Sherry works for Domino's as a, as a shift manager. She has been there for eight years. Her current salaried income is $2,200 monthly. Additionally, she earns a yearly bonus of $9,000, which she has earned for the, past for the last five years since becoming shift manager. Additional information relating to both the mortgage and car loans is available from the printouts attached below. And that, that is the two, the two printouts we looked at, the, the consumer loan um, and the, um, or the car loan and the mortgage loan, okay? And uh, th those would be on the, let me just make sure I get my numbers correct. Okay. Yeah, so th those should be on on um, uh, page one of three, right? I think we have those. Yeah, one o two. Yeah, one o two and one o three. Yeah. Okay. So those should be on page one, pages one o two and one o three. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is um, you, want, you want to complete the asset side of the network statement, okay? So um, so what, what, what um, is one of the uh, first assets we, we know about um, The first asset that I see that they mention here is possibly the uh, mortgage itself. Okay, so 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 if it's the asset, it won't be so much the mortgage, but it'll be the residence, right, or the real estate, because it, it we 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 have no, um, so on the asset side you'll talk about the residence, on the liability side you'll talk about the mortgage over that residence. Okay, so mortgage. Okay, so. So um, the residents would come under real estate. So in that reading, we're not told whether or not they have any cash or what amount of cash they have. We're not told what stocks and bonds they have, if they have any, any accounts receivables, any cash or under values on life insurances. So the first item that, that is showed here is um, the, the, the real estate. And what is the value of that real estate? Based on the statement, if I'm reading it correctly, that would be mm -hmm. current collection mm -hmm. value, 275,000. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me just scroll back. Um, okay, so 
okay, the mortgage loan, so you're getting that, you're getting that information, $275,000 from current collateral security value, right? Yes, sir. Which is $275,000. Okay, so every, everyone sees where, where we get the value of the, of the, of the, of the residence? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, so while, yeah. while, while it's not given in the, in the, um, in, in the write-up, right? In the actual write-up on page 101, we can find the value of that by um, looking at the um, current collateral security value um, on the mortgage loan statement, okay? Generally though, um, what will happen is you, you'll have a package um, uh, um, from, from your clients, one of the items will be a, an appraisal, okay? And, and so you'll get the current collateral security value from the, from, from the appraisal, okay? So, um, and that might be more recent than what is in your system. So for example, the, um, this current collateral security value um, may, may have been um, uh, uh, a year ago, okay? So may, maybe they brought in, um, uh, the, the, the previous year they brought in the, um, an, an appraisal um, or some, some valuation was done on the property and it was determined that it was um, $275,000. But they've come back to you for refinancing and refinancing may show um, the, the, the appraisal for, for the refinancing, the current appraisal would show it, it might be now with $300,000 or the value of $275,000 may have been maintained or it may have slipped to $270,000, okay? But for now, based on the information we have on hand, and we can only use the information we have on hand at our disposal, the, for all, our intents and purposes, the collateral security, the current collateral security value is two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay, so um, okay, so we plug that in two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay, what other assets are we told that they have? They have a depreciating asset in regards to their car, the automobile. Auto, yeah. Okay, so. Um, so current value twenty four thousand. Okay. Twenty four thousand three hundred dollars, sir. Okay, and and again, like the I'll 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 go back, and again like the um, similar to what we did at the um, for the mortgage, the current collateral security value is twenty four thousand three hundred, and we got that from the from the um, from the loan statement. Okay. Um, the reason why we're, we're going through this exercise is for us to, to begin to um, uh, extrapolating information. So the customer brings us in, brings us items or documents, right? And um, it's up to us to um, to use those documents to extrapolate information, and so. We're going through this to show that um, based on those items that, that, that you're given, where you can find the information to plug it in. Normally what will happen is when you take the, the statements, the, sorry, the customer's um, uh, statement of affairs, um, their personal um, statement of affairs or network statement, they will provide you, they'll be giving you this information. Okay, they'll be saying, oh, we have cash, um, in, in three different banks, it totals, you know, $8,000 or $3,000, whatever the case may be. We have stocks and bonds in such and such and such a place. Um, uh, accounts receivable, we have, so for example, if um, let's say um, someone has paid um, bonuses quarterly or commissions quarterly, right? If someone has paid commissions quarterly and um, they, they, they were told that the end of this quarter, the end of this quarter, you'll get three thousand dollars in bonus or three thousand dollars in commission. Once they have been told that they, that they are getting it, it becomes an accounts receivable. Okay, so 
So if in in, in the case of um, Sherry, Sherry worked at um, Sherry works at uh, Domino's. Okay, she she gets nine thousand um, dollars. What it says? Um, she earns a yearly bonus of nine thousand dollars, which she's earned for the past five years. So if coming towards um, the end of the, the the banks, I mean uh, Domino's fiscal year. So let's say their fiscal year um, ends um, December, which is the normal, you know, annual year. Okay, so she gets notification in, you know, late November or even early December that at the end of December, December's paycheck, you'll get nine thousand dollars in bonus, or twelve thousand dollars in bonus, or seven thousand dollars in bonus. Okay, so once she has been given um, notice that she's actually going to get that at a specific time period, that becomes an, that that becomes an accounts payable. I mean, receivable for her, an accounts receivable for her. So you can, you know, kind of use that. Um, so, for example, if the customer needed closing costs of ten thousand dollars but they only had cash of $1,000. Your question would be, okay, you need $10,000 to close this deal, but you only have 1,000. Where's the other 9,000 coming from? And she would say, well, I have accounts receivable, which comes from my bonus at the end of December, um, which is $9,000. So there you have it, 1,000 in cash and $9,000 in accounts receivable, okay? And you have to be careful on what you what you accept as um, accounts receivable. It have to be so for for a company like Domino's, and they tell you they can pay your bonus. I would take their word for it. A company like um, Atlantis, you know, you could you could take their word for it. Um, you know, but some of these you know uh, little stores around the corner here, or you know, the man working for the for for contractor, and the contractor say I can pay you this. Um, I wouldn't rely too much on. Um, or much at all on, on that, okay? Because usually um, the persons who are told they're gonna be getting these bonuses are given that in writing some way, some way or the other, whether it's a, a, a letter or via personal email to them, okay? So it's something that they can provide you evidence of. Mr. Okay. Mr. Nardage, to me, yes. uh, I'm struggling with that part. Uh, most companies don't, it's if we do well and not, we, it's not a guarantee more or less uh, in regards to Christmas bonuses and end of year bonuses or stipends or so forth. If we do well, so if they're saying, if you could not be assured of having something in writing or is it based upon what has been performed in regards to history? Like she's been getting this nine thousand dollars for every, for the past five years. If she somehow can produce some uh, check stub or history of this particular amount, then it would be better. Yeah. Well, what what, what what would normally happen is that in um, their employment confirmation letter, it would say that um, uh, they earn um, such and such a salary. And um, has have earned on, on average, um, say ten thousand dollars in, in in bonus or something like that. Okay. Is that clarity? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and same, same with, with commissioned income, you, the, the, um, or, or tips and gratuities. So, so like Atlantis would say, would their average um, tips or gratuity has been? You know, in, in, for the hotel industry. Okay. All right. So we know that uh, they have real estate in terms of uh, network um, assets. They have the auto. Um, are, are there any other assets that we are given the values of? Uh. Their salaries, but that's not that, that's not an asset, right? No, it isn't. Mm -mm. And credit okay. cards, they're not. No. 
Okay, so so in terms of assets, we, we assume they are furniture, but we're not we're not told the value of the furniture. So um, so you know we, we we're looking for information that we that that we have. Okay, so um, so it doesn't what appear. The a, sorry. What the gratuity is, I see Martin receives a $300 weekly gratuity. Would that be considered an asset as well? No, you, 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 wouldn't, you, wouldn't, um, you, you wouldn't look at that because when you are, see, un, un, unlike, um, unlike uh, uh, bonuses or um, uh, let's say for example, um, someone is getting um, an insurance settlement um, from, 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 from a car accident. Um, those things can be, can be verified and those, those will be accounts receivables, right? But generally, uh, apart from um, unusual things like um, bonuses, you, you, won't, you, you won't include um, uh, your, your salaries and... Um, and, and stuff directly from, from regular salary, um, such as commissions or, or tips or gratuities as um, accounts receivables or as an asset. Bo bonuses are, are one of those um, um, rare occasions. And again, they, they would have to, to, to um, you know, it would have to be within, you know, a, a month or two, you know, for it to be an accounts receivable. You have to get notice of it. Again, because bonuses and profit sharing is not anything that's guaranteed. But once it's declared, um, and, and, and you're told the amount that you're getting, it becomes an accounts receivable. Okay. And again, your financial institution may not want you to include that as, a, as an accounts receivable. Um, uh, either the the the, the the bonus or the um, or the um, profit sharing, um, even if it's declared and you know the client has a note, they may not want you to put that as an accounts receivable. Fine, um, but that doesn't negate the fact that um, you can use it in terms of the, um, and we'll get to that um, in 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 terms of uh, calculating a, um, a a person's um, debt service ratios. So th th those things, we, we, we do look at gratuities, tips, bonuses, commissions, um, regular salaries, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're looking at um, debt service ratios, okay? So we don't, we don't include those in regards to DSRs. No, we, include, we, we include those in terms of, in, in, in when we're looking at DSRs, we, okay. and we'll be looking at that. Okay, so you, you do include tips, gratuities, bonuses, profit sharing, whatever you um, you know, all 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 all, all and sundry, including your, obviously salary didn't come. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but, uh, so we have real estate, we have auto. We we said there were no other. There were no other um, assets um, that we had information on. So we, if we add them two together, what, what amount do we get when we add those two together? That's 200, my math is right, 299,300. Okay, 299,300, anybody get anything different? No, I got that. Okay, so, so total assets are 299,300. Okay, so let's turn now to the liability side. Okay, and from the write up on page 101, um, well, we know they pay a mortgage, so, that, so, that, so, so rent does not, um, they don't pay rent, so we could exclude rent. Um, do they have any credit cards? We got two of them devils. Got two? <laughs> you call them devils, eh? Okay. Uh, 
but we but but we looked at the products and we said we we said that that um that they were they that, that they offered flexibility and security. So why do you call them devils? Because <laughs> most people are disciplined myself. Oh, uh, okay, all right. I'm just being devils out of your kidding. Okay, <laughs> I'm being devils, okay. <coughs> okay. So credit cards, they have two of those. Okay. Um now what do we what do we put in the amount owing? Do we put the limits or do we put the amounts owing? The amount owing, right? Correct. The what amount is owing. owing? The amount right. owing. Okay. Yes. Now if your if if your loans um your 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 loan application or your statement of affairs has a section in it next to credit cards or in the credit cards that talks about the limits. You can insert uh, what the limits is there because you'll see in brackets it says um, next to credit cards it says limits question mark. Okay, so some um, will ask for that information there, or in some other section of the application, like on the back of the application, it may say you know bank loans, which bank the the outstanding no, the original balance, the current balance, payment amount. They'll do the same thing for credit cards. What is the limit? What is the current amount? And so on the so the, the idea being that um, on the statement of affairs portion of the loan application, they just want to uh, see a total. Okay, a total of those of of of, of, of those um, cat, that category. So for credit cards, um, we'll add the two of them together. And so um, we said we said they have two. And the outstanding balance, what were those outstanding balances again on those two? 2395 and $50. Okay, and if we add those two together, um, what amount do we get? 2445, $2,445. Okay, yes, okay, so $2,445 is the, the total, um, amount owing on the credit cards, okay? And if we needed to fill in the limits, um, the limits would have been the 4,000 plus the 3,200. So they, they have, the limits would be 7,200, okay? But in, in, in the, in, uh, there, there's no um, allocation here for, for the limits. So we don't need to put that. We just need to put in the amount owing on the two, card, two cards. Okay, consumer loan or consumer loans. We know um, they have they have one here that we're told about at least, eh? Yes, what is correct. the amount? What 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 is the amount of that? The one that they were seeking and granted approval for, uh, three hundred forty for the uh, first year of school for their. So I think they mentioned their daughter, college costs. No, that, that's, that's what they're applying for now. They don't, they don't have that now. Okay. It'll be the auto one. Oh, yeah. The auto. <coughs> yeah. the auto so what, they have, what, they have, what they have now is the auto loan. And what, what is the balance outstanding on that? 16193 $16,162. Okay, because we're looking at we're looking at principal balance, mm. not pay off. Because um, if they get if, if they got this if they got this print out on February on February the fifteenth, this one was on February the fourth. If they got it on February the fifteenth, the payoff amount would change because the accrued interest would be would be more. Okay. Okay, because we'll be looking at fifteen days interest as opposed to four days interest. So in here we're looking at principal balances, principal amounts. The same, the same as if you were um, looking at the financial statements for, for a business, right? Um, when many ask for, 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 the, for the loan amounts outstanding, you put the principal balances, not the payoff amounts. Okay. <coughs> so what is the, what's, oh yeah, so we did say 16,162, okay? And we, we got that from the loan statement, right? Yes, sir. On page 102, okay. So we also know that they have a mortgage. 975 monthly? Yes. 
And what what is the um amount owing on that? Seventy six nine thirty five thousand. Sorry. Seventy. Seventy six. Seventy six nine thirty five. Okay, seventy six nine thirty five. Yes, and again we get that from the mortgage statement, right? On page one hundred three. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, so far we have no rent because they pay the mortgage. Um, total credit card balances owing, uh, consumer loan balance owing, the mortgage um, balance loan owing. Are there any other liabilities that we are told they, that they owe on? Okay, so from the write up, it's only these three, right? Yeah. So what is it? So then we, we now move to our total. So what is our total? Total of five. Nine five five four two. Nine five five four two. Okay. All right. So we have our total um, assets of 299,300. Um, um, just just for, 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 uh, as a point, can you all see my cursor? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Moving up and down? Yes, sir. Okay, okay good, okay. So, um, so on our assets, we have a total of 299,300. And um, for our liabilities, we have a total of 95,554. Now, what did we, what did we say, um, or how, how did we say you calculate net worth? Just minus the liability from the assets. Okay, so you um, minus or subtract um, the 95,542 from the 99,300 and we get, we get what? Two hundred and three thousand seven fifty eight. So sorry. Um. Two hundred and three thousand seven fifty eight. Yep, that's what I get. Okay. Two hundred three. Um, seven fifty eight. Okay. So great stuff. So. So so far for Martin Sherry roll, we've looked at <clears throat> their, um. Looked at their, reviewed their loan um, statements. We've completed their net worth statement. Okay. Um, and um, well, we will we'll, 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 we'll complete more stuff as we as we as we cover those um, cover those sections. Okay. Um, I want us to look at another exercise. Um, the class assignment number one. Um, that I asked you to, to, to print out. Sure. I, I put it here. Okay. And so we're gonna do two things with, with this. The first is um, given the information um, that we've been provided, we're gonna complete his network statement. And then we're gonna answer, answer the question, is uh, Mr. Baines' network positive or negative? Okay, um, and I'm focusing on, on on is it a positive or negative network? Because um, we we really and truthfully want a client to have a positive um, network. That, that 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 is important. Okay, although a negative um, network may not exclude them from being granted a loan, but certainly we want a positive network. If there's a net, negative net worth, we need to look to a deeper dive to find out, you know, what what what, what why the situation um, 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 exists. Okay, so uh, everyone everyone has their um, copy of the Benjamin Bain class assignment number one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so. Um, uh, so rather than reading through this, I'm just going to go straight to the to the net weight um, statement. 
Um, and then um, we'll just uh, take we'll just take the points that we need um, as we go along. Okay, so. <laughs> So what is the what is the first um one second for me? Let's get it screen share here. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so um, based on the information we have, let's complete um, Benjamin Bain's net worth statement. Okay, does he have any cash? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and this one where, where, where is that? Sorry. Sorry. Where, where is that cash? That's in the savings account. In the savings. Okay, so he has. He has he has um, savings, okay. Any other cash he has? No. Mm -mm. Yes, from he the, has, yes, from, from the life deposit. insurance. Sorry? He has a fixed deposit. He has a fixed deposit as well, fixed assets. Okay, he has, he has a fixed deposit. Okay, um, so that, that's cash, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, any other any other cash she has? Any good cash? No, that's it. That's it. Okay, so we know he has um, a savings account um, that has nine hundred forty dollars, and he has a fixed deposit that has two thousand three hundred eighty six dollars. So we have to add those two together because we want his total cash. What what do they come to? The total on that. Uh, three three thousand three hundred twenty-six. Three thousand three hundred twenty-six. Yes. Okay. Good stuff. Um. So, uh, does he own any stocks or bonds based on that, that write-up? No. 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 No stocks or bonds. Okay. Um. Does he have any accounts receivable? Yes. Yeah. The contract to build the contract The contract, the, the contract, the contract yeah. job, yeah. Okay, so he has a construction contract to build an apartment complex for um, $375,000. Um, um, that he, that he, um, well, I just need to make sure my screen is big enough for me to read. I I got a question, okay. guys. Y'all could probably just let me know. If it's an accounts receivable and something was in close range, right? Even though he has a contract, would he get the full 375 or would he only get for the foundation completed to 3,800? I mean, the 38,000. Okay, so we, 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 let's, let's examine this, um, the statement. It says, he has a construction contract to build an apartment complex for $375,000, for which he has already completed the foundation at a cost of $38,000, but for which he is awaiting the site inspector to sign off on the stage inspection within the next week so that he can receive payment. So based on our statement, what would be the accounts receivable? The $38,000. Um, $38, because it's probably um, being what they call a drawdown, right? Yes. Okay. No, oh, yeah, that's not it. So he, he's he's completed the foundation at a cost of $38,000. The only thing that's stopping him from getting that $38,000 is the inspect, inspector to sign off um, on the stage inspection within the next week, okay? So, um, so there's this contract, we have a side of this contract, we assume we have a side of this contract, 
He's saying the stage payments, we see this, that he's entitled to $38,000. And it's only um, a week that he, he, he expects it. You know, it could be the, the very next day, but he, he's being conservative and probably saying within the next, within the next week, right? And that, that's, that's fine for us. Um, because we, he, this is not um, three months down the road, five months down the road, or some nebulous thing. Okay, this is actually a, a, a job that he's actually started, work he's already completed, and um, monies that he's entitled to. Okay, now um, it, 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 it could be, something could go wrong, right? Uh, in a worst case scenario, the people, ref, the, people, the people refuse to release the money to him, right? Um, but that's, that, that's, you know, in, in the normal course of doing business, um, uh, it is expected that he'll get his, his, his thirty-eight thousand dollars, particularly if he, he produces a contract um, and and and, and the, the signed release form by the by the by by by, by his clients authorizing the release of the money. So they just waiting for the for the site inspector to to do the to do the inspection, confirm it's in 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 in, in order, and the bank would um, who's financing the project would release the money um, to. Um, to, to the contractor, okay? So in this instance, we're looking at a pure, you know, we're, we're not looking at anything hypothetical me going wrong. In the normal course of things, he should get his payment within um, within a week's time, okay? So um, we look at the $38,000 as like an accounts receivable, okay? Any other assets? What about cash surrender, um, cash surrender value? Life insurance? Does he have any of those? Life insurance? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what amount do we plug in there? 78. 78. We... No. <laughs> I thought you put the 150. Well, we have to put the 150 thousand dollars because that's the total value of the insurance sure i that's what i'm assuming um, because the, i wouldn't put it personally i wouldn't put it because it says csv meaning cash surrender value so i would assume that's what they're talking about yes cash surrender value to life insurance again um um it, it is it is kind of like the, the credit cards there's this limit and the limit is um, what one hundred fifty thousand dollars life insurance policy. That's the face. That's the face value. It didn't ask you for FV face value. It asked yeah. you for cash surrender value. <clears throat> because only unless he dies, will you get the one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's not an asset. Mm. Only the portion that he can withdraw, normally cash surrender value, <clears throat> it means that if he surrenders that policy, he can get. That portion, and in this instance, it's seven thousand eight hundred seventy-eight dollars. <coughs> okay, so the cash surrender value portion is what you would put in on the asset side. Is that understood? Yeah. Not the, not, not the face value, the cash surrender value. And in this instance, the um, net worth statement is telling you what they want. They want the cash surrender value, CSV. Okay. Okay. Um, so, do we know if he has any real estate? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, oh. Yes. We, we told he has real estate. What, what, is, what does it say about real estate? He has a home. He has a property and a home. Property and a home. Property and a home. And so, what? Okay. Um, so the so so the the the, the house is ninety four thousand, and the adjoining property is fifty four thousand. Mm -hmm. um, but he didn't. But he didn't buy these. These were left to him by by his um, late grandfather. Yeah, that's still his assets. Once they're in his name, it's still his. They're his, exactly. Very good. Okay. So um, what we need to do now is to add the, the, the two of those properties together. 
148,000. Okay, so we got 148,000. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be asking questions like that as we go along because I want to make sure that, that, that we understand why, um, for example, we, we, we are using them. Because sometimes we take these things for granted. Um, so, uh, so let's say, for example, we see him have real estate of $148,000. And let's say that he was a fairly young person. There's no mortgage outstanding. I don't, I don't, um, he doesn't have any mortgages outstanding, I don't think, right? Um, and so you, may, so you may say, okay, well, this place has only been working for three years. You know, this child only 21. How could he own a property $148,000? Okay, and there's no, no, no loan or mortgage outstanding against it. Okay, um, the answer will be, I inherited it. Okay, which is legitimate, okay? But when you're looking at um, a, a, a person's um, statement of affairs, um, there's some things that should should um, cause you to ask to ask some questions, okay, um, and, and 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 determine get get answers that are um, that would reasonably explain um, the acquisition or whatever it is um, um, of, of of an asset, okay. All right, so um, what's next? We got, um, does he have any auto loans? He owns uh, apparently like two vehicles, a Honda Accord. Sorry, not, not, not auto loans, um, autos? Uh, Honda Accord, 2013 Honda Accord at a value of $12,700. Okay. In addition to that, he also has a small pickup truck that he uses for his work. With the value okay. of $1,900. Okay. So, what, what do we do with those two vehicles? We could combine them and add them together, or we could even, seeing that we have the space available, we could also list those as well individually. Yes. Okay. So, you can uh, um, list them collectively. Um, <laughs> or you can list them separately. So in this instance, um, I've listed them separately, okay? There's a car, 12,700 and a truck, $1,900, okay? Um, why, why might I want to list it separately? If, uh, if, I have that, if I have that ability, why might I list it separately? Because you would give a, a proper perspective on what all of your assets are in regards to a description is similar to if the space was provided for the credit cards in regards to a limit, you would try to give as much clear information to present this particular person's net worth as clearly as possible. Yes. And, and, and another point is because he's in construction, um, uh, you're showing, you know, one, one is the car that he uses, you know, for his everyday everyday life and family life or whatever it is um, and the truck that he uses for his business okay um, so, you know so it shows okay he's in construction he has a truck for construction um, he didn't use a no car whatever it is um, okay any other assets yes his construction tools tools the tools his construction tools why would he include his construction tools because they're assets in regards to what he uses in his job and they carry a value. Okay, very good. Okay, so he has tools valued at 3,500. So we plong those in. Okay, um, any other assets we're told about? No, sir. Okay. Okay. All the assets. Okay, so we'll have total these. Um, someone who has fast and speedy fingers, what is the total on that? What is the total on that? 215,304. Okay, 215,304. Okay. All right, so now we turn our attention to the um, liability side. Okay. Um, does he pay rent? No, sir. No. Okay, he doesn't pay any rent. 
um because he, he he lives in um on on the property the one that has the building that was left to him by his late grandfather okay um does he have any credit card yes sir yes okay um he has he has, he has one or more than one he has two he has two okay and what does he owe, owe what does he owe on those credit cards it says one has a limit of twenty five hundred, and the other one has a balance of thirty three seventy five. Okay. Um, that's two credit cards or one. I'm looking at. I think I'm looking at one, unless I'm missing it. On a credit card with yeah. a standby. I think limit. it's one. The, the let, limit let is twenty five hundred. Okay. So the, 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 okay, let me look look at the narrative again. Um, existing loan with another bank, a fixed deposit, savings, and a credit card, a limit of $2,500 and a balance of $375, house and bank account, small pickup truck, construction contract, life insurance policy. Okay, so yes, there's one, um, one credit card here, and the balance is $375, right? Balance is $375, yes, sir. Okay, and that's yeah. that has a limit. That has a limit of um, twenty five twenty five hundred dollars. Yes, sir. But we we but we want the balance, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so three three seventy five. It is all right. Going once, going twice, three seventy five. So okay. Um, so does he have any consumer loans? Yes. Yeah, he does. He has a for the car loan for the, the Honda. He has a he has a loan on the Honda. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So um, that 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 is the first bullet point: an existing loan with another bank in the amount of in the amount of six thousand nine seventy three for a twenty thirteen Honda Accord, currently so, worth twelve thousand seven hundred dollars. Okay, um, so we know he has that consumer loan. So we put that in there, $6,973. Okay, um, any other <clears throat> um, liabilities listed in our write-up? No, sir, I don't see, I don't see anything else. Anyone else? No, I don't see anything else either. Okay, so let's add those two together and what do we get? 207.956. Sorry? Oh, oh, so, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 Sorry, seven thousand three hundred forty-eight. <laughs> okay, so um, we get seven thousand three hundred forty-eight dollars. Okay, so then we um, throw that down to the less total liabilities. So we subtract that from our assets, and 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 now that big figure you was quoting, you could you could quote that again now. Two hundred and seven thousand nine hundred and fifty-six. Okay, so we have two hundred seven thousand nine hundred fifty-six dollars. Go on. Okay. All right. So, any que any questions on completing net worth statements before we? Um, we go, we go further. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Okay. All right. If there, there are no questions, that pretty much hey, concludes. We're going to get more practice questions like this. Sorry? Will there be more practice questions like this? Yes. On, 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 the, on the final exam, you will have 
um, the the like the the Martin the, the in class case study question. Um, you will you you will have a, a question. One of your questions will be um, a question like that one. So you'll have true false. Will will that one come under fill in the blanks? Right. So um, so you'll have true false multiple choice fill in the blanks, and this will be one of those. Uh, one, one, one of those questions. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So you'll have you'll have net worth, um, and you'll see um, when when we get to completing the DSRs, um, answering some questions, whatever it is. So you'll have, you'll have a question similar to um, the Martin and Sherry rule case. Okay. Um, and we we're gonna do sufficient exercises both in class and um, homework that'll prepare you for it. In fact, what I'm going to do is, while I'm not going to grade it, um, uh, at some point, maybe next week, Thursday, I will um, probably give you a um, one of the past mock midterm exams, because I, I, I told you um, during the summer, I don't do the mock, um, I, I don't do a midterm exam, um, but I will probably give you, give you a mock um, midterm exam for you to, to, um, to complete. Um, and, and I'll cover everything we've done up to that point. And it will include, um, like I said, um, this up to, what, up to what we've done. So hopefully by, we, we, sh we, sh we should have covered um, completing the DSRs by um, class eight, because then we begin to, to, to wrap up um, the, the credit operations side um, and look more at inter international business um, for the last uh, two classes. Okay, so classes 13 and 14 will be um, geared mainly towards inter uh, international operations. And the first 12 classes towards um, uh, local banking um, credit assessment. Okay, <clears throat> so this completes, completes it for um, character, okay? So we looked at various aspects of, of character. And so now we move on to the, to the next um, phase, which is ability, okay? And so um, this is where we, we begin looking at debt service ratios. Um, you know, uh, can the borrower meet the payments, okay? Um, and... So let's begin looking at ability, okay, under Compari. So we're under the A for Compari. So um, we started out with a character and we said that character was um, probably arguably the, um, well, it was one of the most important, but it was um, uh, arguably, you know, difficult to define and, and, and wrap your hand around because it, in, in, it involved um, um, a, a lot of qualitative um, stuff, you know, um, as well as some quantitative stuff. Um, but here, you know, um, when we're looking at ability, for the most part, we're looking at um, the science side of um, the, the science side of, of, of lending, okay? And next to character, ability is probably the most important component of credit assessment um, that we will consider, okay? So we know we have M margin, which includes interest rate, okay, P for purpose, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and, you know, eventually, um, you know, toward the end of this chapter, we will talk about the big three, okay? Um, certainly character is one of those. Um, ability is the second, and the I in Campari, um, the insurance or your collateral security would be that third, that third one. So if you, um, uh, you know, uh, if you if you wanted to to do a loan, um, just based on character, ability, and um, collateral security or, or insurance, as it is called in, in Campari, um, you should be able to lend just using those three elements, okay? 
Remember, right? Um, in in one of the introductory um, introductory lessons, I I spoke about um, I spoke about um, you know people doing you know the three day diet, the ten day diet. This so many steps to do this. So, um, you know, twelve step approach to losing weight, the three step. You know, um, what you find that is there they are normally core principles that if you apply to losing weight, to building a house to um, assessing credit, um, there's some core steps, okay? But what you find is because people want their own glory and, and, and day of fame, they add some of these other things on because they want to get sales for their book or whatever it is, okay, or their product, okay? So, um, so, so again, you know, next to character, ability is probably the most important component of um, assessing credit. If it is clear, this is um, a fill in the blank. And again, if you don't um, get it all, um, you'll be getting the PowerPoint presentation that you could complete it. But hopefully um, um, you, you will have enough time to, to, to write it down. If it is clear that the client cannot pay, then the decision should be to decline the loan. Okay, so upfront, if it is obvious that the client can't pay, um, the client alone, okay? And um, remember when we, when, when we looked in the earlier chapter on the um, American Bankers Association, their flow chart on how loan applications flow, right? Um, you know, if, you know, it, uh, can the client play, pay? No, stop the loan. Can they pay? Proceed with the next step, okay? So um, if you look at the, 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 the um, process chart um, in your organization, or even if your organization has one, or if you look at the one, the American Bankers Association that we looked at several, um, several pages back, um, uh, you, you'll see that if, they can, if, if it's obvious they can't be, there's no need pursuing, pursuing it any further. However, if, if there are indications that they, are, they can be, then we proceed to be looking at um, debt service um, um, uh, ratios. And um, the way you do that is through income confirmation. Okay. So, <clears throat> so the, the first thing we'll be looking at is debt service ratios, what they are, how you calculate them. Um, and then we'll follow by actually looking at what do you do for to confirm income. Um, and in calculating um, the various sources of income. Um, so whether the people are paid weekly, whether they're paid annually, um, the different types, whether it's salaried income, bonus, tips, or gratuity as some people call it, whether it's rental income, not very really paying rent, but they're actually getting rent from as a source of income, okay? So um, let's begin by looking at um, debt service ratios, okay? So what, what, are, what are debt service ratios? Well, debt service ratios, um, I guess, si simply means is what amount a person spends out of their salary, um, or I should say the proportion of which a person spends out of their salary on a certain item or category of items. Okay, so you'll see here that there are three debt service ratios listed. Okay, there's a consumer debt service ratio. There's a gross or gross debt service ratio. And then there's a total um, debt service ratio. And we're gonna go through each one of them to say what they are and what they represent, okay? The first one we're gonna look at is the consumer debt service ratio. Okay, what is the consumer debt service ratio? The consumer debt service ratio is your total monthly consumer debt payments as a percentage of your monthly income. Okay, so consumer debt payments. What are, what, what, what are consumer debt payments? Anyone want to venture what the consumer debt payments are? Like your consumer loans. Consumer loans, yes. Um, credit cards. 
Point number three actually tells us, eh? Um, it says they consist of consumer loans and credit cards, right? So, um, and uh, it says that the total of, of, of the percentage should not exceed 10% of your monthly income. Well, that, that's where we hit, we hit um, trouble to begin with, right? Because who, um, those of you who are involved in credit, whose consumer loan by itself is anywhere as low as 10% of their monthly income? Most of, those, most of those debt service ratios on consumer debt are 35, 45, 50%. They, they're, they're quite high because we tend to use, we, we tend to use the 45%, there's a 45% there's a, um, um, universal um, for, for total debt servicing. Maybe I should have started with total debt servicing, right? Um, let me just quickly go. Um, okay, so uh, let's cross total. Okay, so total debt servicing, you see, um, um, to the, it says here, um, total debt service ratio um, is your total monthly payment obligations as a percentage of your monthly income. It should not exceed 45% of your monthly income. What does the total debt service um, ratio consist of? If you look down to the bottom, TDS star or total debt service ratio, of 45% equals, um, oh, this, 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 this is the wrong way around. Um, that should be 10% and 35%. Um, oh boy, that's, that's a boo-boo on my part, my bad. Okay, so GDSR should be 35 and CDSR should be 10%. 10 okay, so let's go back to consumer debt. You said it should not exceed 10% of your monthly income. Um, so that boo -boo on, on that page, I'm going to have to correct that before I send um, before I send you all the PowerPoint presentation um, after class. So the consumer debt service ratio, which is um, consumer loans and credit cards, should not be more than ten percent. Okay, the gross debt service um, that is your total monthly housing mortgage payment as a percentage of your total monthly income. Now, don't ask me why they put um, they put it as gross debt service ratio rather than housing debt service ratio because housing would would include whether you're paying a mortgage or you're paying rent. Okay, so if it was up to me, way back um, before Christopher Columbus was even wearing diapers, I would have put um, housing debt service ratio, but um, this is what has been passed down to us from, from years and years and years of banking and finance. Um, they refer to it as the housing side of um, the debt servicing as gross debt service ratio, okay? So um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably Google it, or you could probably Google it and see why they came up with that word, gross debt service ratio. It would be interesting, I'm, I'm sure, okay? But for the housing side, that should not be more than 35% of your total monthly income, okay? And again, it consists of either your mortgage loans or your or residential rent or lease, okay? So we have consumer debt of 10%, um, gross debt service 35%, giving us our total debt um, of, so the total debt would be our consumer loans and credit cards, added to um, our, housing, our housing debt, okay? So this down here is, is wrong. The, the, these, these two percentages of, of should be flipped, okay? So it should be um, 45, 10, and 35, okay? So 35 and 10 will give you your 45, okay? Is that understood? Yes, sir. Okay, I apologize for that, that boo boo once again, down to the bottom there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> here are the, uh, the formula I for um, doing um, gross debt servicing and also total debt servicing. They're similar but um, different um, 
uh, um, what do you call it? Numerators are, are, are used, okay? We use the same denominator. So the common denominator between the two of them is the gross monthly income. And the, um, so for, for calculating um, gross debt service um, ratio or GDSR, use the proposed or actual mortgage loan monthly payment or their rent um, as a percentage of uh, their gross monthly income. Okay, and we'll say why we say gross net monthly income rather than net monthly income in a little bit, okay? So similarly, we will use the total monthly payments. And if they if they are applying to, applying to you for a new loan, and you, you, will, you will include the new loan um, payment amount in, in, in this amount, because that will tell you what their uh, projected or proposed um, TDSR would be. Okay. So, uh, okay. So let's do a quick little exercise. Okay, and this exercise on calculating GDSR and TDSR. Um, now you'll, you'll, you'll notice that I have excluded um, um, CDSR. Okay. Um, I've include, excluded CDSR because very seldom nowadays do we use um, the consumer debt service ratio. As, 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 as I pointed out at the beginning, it's only 10%. And um, most people's uh, consumer debt ratio is much higher than 10%. So you find banks will use just the housing debt service ratio or the GDSR and the total debt service ratio, okay? Um, for consumer loans, you, they, most banks now just use probably the TDSR. Okay, only when a mortgage is involved, you see them now including the GDS uh, or the housing. Okay, so, um, but we, we, we're gonna, without doing the CDSR, we will do it the way it, it, um, um, it, it, it should occur. So in this exercise, we're looking at someone who has a total income of um, $3,750 per month. And now these are all monthly figures, okay? So they, um, they um, receive an income of $3,750 a month. Um, their monthly commitments, um, the mortgage loan is $1,025. The car payment is $325 and the minimum credit card payment is $150. So the total monthly commitments equals $1,500. So you add, um, uh, these three, the mortgage loan, the car loan, the credit, credit card, to give you your, your total, your, your, that, that total, okay? All right? So, um, so I, I've excluded the, um, uh, what would you call it? The, um, I have the information down here to the bottom. Mortgage loan, car loan, credit card, the commitments, the monthly commitments, okay? So we're first looking at the gross debt service ratio, okay? And we, 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 we're calculating that. So it says use a proposed or actual mortgage loan monthly payment, okay? Um, and so if you look at the section at the bottom here, we fill that in, um, the mortgage loan is $1,025, okay? Um, the denominator or the gross monthly income, I mean, uh, is $3,750. We got that from, from the previous screen, okay? So total income is $3,750. So we plug that down there. So um, we divide the 1,025 by 3,750. We multiply it by 100 in order to get our percentage. And our percentage works out to $27 and, um, sorry, 27.33%. Okay, everyone sees that? Yes, sir. Did, did someone say not quite? Did, did someone not get it? Because I'll, I'll go over it again. 
if need be. Okay, so every, everyone got that. So the, the mortgage payment divided by uh, the total um, gross or gross, I should say gross monthly income multiplied by 100 would give us um, a GDSR of 27.33%, okay? So now we move on to calculating the total debt service ratio. Okay, this is where we use the total monthly payments and we divide that by um, the monthly income, the gross monthly income, multiply that by 100. So we said that the total monthly payments of $1,500 so that's our numerator of $1,500, which we have up here, um, divided by the 3,750, multiplied by 100, that gives us 40%. Everyone sees that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we've covered calculating the um, gross debt, I mean, the gross, the gross debt service ratio and the um, total debt service ratios. So what are some questions we need to ask ourselves um, when we are completing um, or trying to calculate debt service ratios? So are the debt service ratios, just the GDS and the TDS ratios within our guideline for the amount and term requested? Okay. And in the, um, the two examples, uh, we have 27.3 and we have 40.0, okay? And we said that um, for um, uh, gross debt service ratio, um, it should not, um, it should not, ex it should not um, be more than 35% and for to total, it should not be more than 45%. So in this instance, in this example, um, they are within this person, wherever they are, uh, within our guidelines um, in terms of debt service ratios. Okay. Uh, the, sec the second question you asked can the client meet this debt and total obligations? Okay. The debt service ratios will give you um, will, will give you an idea. You know, while it's not conclusive that they will meet their debt and total obligations. It lets us know that they have the ability, they can meet the debt and total obligation, obligations. They have that ability, they have, that, they have the amount of income, um, an available income to service um, their, their, the debt that you're considering and the total debt, their total debt obligations, okay? What you want to remind yourself when you've completed your Debt service route, um, calculations is have you verified um, the numbers to ensure that everything is correct? And by that we mean, um, have you verified? Have you not mixed weekly figures with monthly figures, etc.? Okay. Um, so if a customer is paid weekly, there's a certain way of calculating. We can look at that. Um, um, in, 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 you know, um, in, in this section, um, if they're paid weekly, that is calculated differently than, um, than monthly. Loan applications, when, when you're doing a loan application, um, you, look to you look to convert everything to monthly, okay? So if, they, if they're paid weekly, you need to convert that um, uh, to monthly. Um, if they get a bonus and it's, and it's an annual bonus, you need to convert that into what they um, uh, would, 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 would get um, on, a, on a monthly basis, okay? So when you're dealing with a loan application, you're dealing with, with monthly figures, okay? So you have to convert anything um, otherwise um, from whatever it is, weekly, yearly, quarterly, um, you need to convert it to monthly, okay? And again, like I said, we'll be looking at how to do that um, uh, later on in this section. The next uh, set of questions asks, is there a debt that will be paid off very shortly within one to four months that would bring um, the debt servicing within guidelines? Now, some financial institutions will use this um, um, option. 
some will not, okay? Um, what, you find, what you'll find is that um, normally in, for, for, for loans that are construction loans, a bank may consider using this um, option if the debt service ratio is kind of tight or it may exceed, okay? So if, for example, they have a, a loan where they make a payment of $250,000, sorry, $250 a month, okay? And that loan payment is going to cause their debt service ratio to go above the guideline. And this is, is it's a construction loan. Um, you would say, okay, by the time, the, the, and, and bear in mind, that construction loans are done through stages, okay? And the building of a, a, a structure will take anywhere from, say, three to six months, although banks may allow you um, over a 12-month period to, to build your structure, whether it's a house or apartment, whatever it is, okay? So the idea being that um, over the next, over the next um, three to six months, um, construction will be, will be taking place. And you will be only paying interest. You won't be paying the full um, proposed mortgage payment. Okay. So that being the case, um, when that full, when when the full payment is is required after the end of three months or six months, however long the construction is supposed to be taken, this payment will fall away. Okay. If we're, we're, this loan is going to that's going to be paid off in three to four months. So if it's going to be paid off in three to four months and that payment is going to fall away, that $250 is going to fall away, um, then you can exclude that $250 payment if that is going to cause the debt service ratio to exceed your guidelines and, and thereby um, allow the, the, the client to, to, um, uh, to qualify. Okay. Now, I, I realize this is a little kind of advanced. Um, but uh, don't concern yourself too, too much about, about this option. Um, you you um, uh, don't, uh, for, this, for, for this particular class, uh, because we won't be looking at any, anything that, that, that um, involves, involves this here. But I thought to mention it um, to, because some, some banks do use it um, when they're considering um, debt service ratios, okay? Um, does the client have the necessary self-discipline? Okay, um, we don't really off. We don't really ask ourselves that question too much nowadays, because we simply, if 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 the if the person has started, we can make take a deduction on, or we can get an ass assignment over. We just simply do the deduction. We do the um, assignment, and so the money comes to us automatically. Okay, so this this particular question here does he or she um, have the necessary self discipline? But an indicator of, of whether or not he or she may have the self-discipline apart from salary deduction would be when we looked at those sources of credit history. Remember that when we said um, existing or, 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 or past um, loan um, um, statements, whether it's from banks, insurance companies, et cetera, and those other forms, um, utility bills, et cetera, okay? Um, where the person would have paid not by salary deduction, but over the counter. Okay, so those will be indication, help us give, give us indications that the person has the necessary self-discipline to, to make payments of their own volition without having us, without us making it mandatory that they pay by salary deduction or by salary assignment. However, in today's environment, if we could get a deduction or, or assignment, we, we will take it, okay? Then we have this last question here. What stage is the borrower in his or her credit life? Okay. And what do you mean the person's credit life? Well, we're gonna look at that um, in the next two slides. Okay. So um, so at what stage is the borrower in his or her credit life? So you want to ask two questions. What is the person's credit life? The second question you want to ask is why is this question? important, okay? I'm glad you asked. So we'll look at it right now, okay? So if we look at um, the four phases of, of an adult's financial life, 
Okay, some people say there are five phases. Um, I've reduced it to four, okay? Because um, some, some, some start at 18, okay? I start at 25. So, um, so 25 to 34 uh, is when consumer debt is at its highest. That's where their college loans, car loans, credit cards, you know, um, you know, a person starts starts uh, working or finishing college, um, and that's when they could concentrate on um, paying off any college loans if, if they made held responsible for them. If they didn't take them on on their own, um, you know, parents may now be responsible for paying it, and I put that on you to to pay. But in the event that they do or have put it on on the client to pay, um, the client will have to look at paying. Um, college loans, um, any car loan they're getting themselves to, that they've taken out to get themselves to and from work, credit cards that they've acquired either while in college or since starting working, starting to work. Okay. So that's, that's, that's age 25 to 34. Then you see ages 35 to 44 is your, you see the, the borrowing days or debt days um, are peaking, you know, they're, they're, they're the highest because you're doing uh, mortgages, you're doing asset acquisitions. Um, you're probably looking at um, owning your own business or starting your own business. Um, and then you may um, have, instead of now having to pay your own college loans, you now have to pay your children's college loans, okay? Um, you may have aging parents that you have to take care of, okay? Um, that, that adds to your debt. So that's age 35 to 44. Then from ages 45 to uh, 55, this is when debt should be subsiding, okay? Um, ideally, um, uh, the, the client um, who sits before you, or even in our personal lives, we should begin um, easing, easing back, easing off, um, uh, taking on additional debt. Now, sometimes that's not always possible because, you know, them aging parents up there, um, or even yourself, may require um, medical attention that requires taking out a loan um, or getting a further charge on your mortgage, whatever it is. Um, but, but ideally, between the ages of 45 and 55 is when that should be subsiding. You're more concentrating on asset protection and asset protection retention, okay? So that's when, you know, like your cash surrender values become more important than your insurances, okay? And, and, and at that age, the cash surrender values, if you have not touched them, or if you're not bored against them, um, should be fairly substan substantial, okay? Um, you're probably looking at establishing trusts um, or um, um, doing wills, okay? If you, if, if you have sufficient assets and you're wealthy enough, you'll probably look at forming a trust for any um, people you want to leave stuff to. Um, and like I said, et cetera, would be like doing wills. And then of course, age 55 and plus, um, that's when you're, you're, you're looking at, you know, um, retirement, okay? Um, traveling, um, giving gifts to your heirs or Charities. Some people do it while they're alive. Um, some people just wait. You, you just gonna wait till like dead, and then so then it, that's when the will will click in. Um, trust can click in either while you are alive, or it can be a trust you know, um, that you leave or once once you've um, met your demise to to to, um, to the beneficiaries of the trust. Okay. So at age fifty five, you're looking at utilizing your assets or asset utilization or disbursement of, 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 of assets. Again, retirement, enjoying your savings and whatever by um, in your retirement years by traveling and doing the things that you wanted to do or gifting to um, possible heirs or, or charities. The next um, screen that we talk, and any questions on any of this before I, I go to the next screen on the adults uh, financial life? And this isn't in the book, right? 
I no, it, it's not. It's not in the book. No. All right. Thank they, you. They are, sorry. No, I said thank you. As I was looking for it in a book, and I'm like, okay, it's probably something that's an update. Yeah, and and and, and hence the the difference in the in the background. Okay, this is um uh copyright 2008 Life Skills Institute. Um, that's a um, institute that my wife and I um, started back in 2008. Well, actually, we started earlier in 2008, but um, but but this this is part of the, part of our Life Skills Institute. Um, uh, 2008, well, we came apart with it. Um, bull and bear. Sorry. No, I say bull and bear. Yeah, bulls and bears. This is that's, that's the invest the investing and stuff. Okay. So, um, okay, there are no questions on this. Um, again, this will, this will be in your, in, in the PowerPoint presentations because this is, um, th this can help you in your personal life as, as well as with your clients. Um, I, 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 I could probably send some other, um, there's one that they talk about five, five phases of an of adult's financial life. Um, I, I, I can probably, send the, um, uh, the, the, the website on that as well. Um, they're, they're, they're very similar, but it's just that um, some of the other ones spread it out a little, a little bit more. So for example, I started at age 25, some of them started at age 18, okay? Um, and, and, and this is primary because of what happens here in the Bahamas, okay? Um, in terms of college. Um, college loans, okay? Um, people normally don't take on college loans until after, um, pay, at least paying for them. We don't, we, or, or sometimes our, we, we, we pay our insurance college loans. We don't want them to pay it. Of course, unless they're making much more than we make and we, we say, since you're making much more than me, you might, you might as well pay off this debt. So um, let's look at a graph and how, how how that previous page looks graphically. Okay. So um, the red line is debt, and the green line is savings and investments. Okay, again, there's some variations. Mine shows an actual straight line. Um, some variations actually so show a curve, which is um, which 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 is more in line with which actually happens. I use the straight lines for, um, for emphasis, okay? Um, I use that, I, I, I choose to use the straight lines for emphasis. And so other charts will have it um, showing a, a, the, the debt and probably even the savings and investments um, curving a bit, okay? So, um, so to, the, to our left, we have, um, dollar values, okay? Whether that's debt dollar values or savings and investment dollar values. So we start from um, zero, we jump to 5,000, all the way up to 600,000, and it could be more, but just for illustrative purposes, I didn't go any farther than um, 600,000. And um, so along the bottom here is the age. Again, I started at age 25, and um, in that, that column that doesn't have an age, that's you know like 18 year olds kind of thing, or even as a child, because um, uh, some people begin savings, um, you know, from you know when 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 you're christened or whatever it is, you know, people start giving your parents money um, to put on put on an investment account or savings account for you. So some people, by the time they go get ready for college, um, the parents may not have to come up with a bunch of money because they've saved over the years, okay? So, um, so that is why the red arrow, and, I mean, the, the red line and the green lines dip to ages below um, 25. So they're like, you know, um, midway, midway there. So you're looking at, you know, mid to late teenage years up to age 24. So your, your debt, um, again, um, increases. And we said it should peak. Um, 
you know, 35 to 45, and you should start, you should start subsiding when you reach that 40, 45 to um, 54 age bracket. So by the time you, you, you retire at age 55, um, you have hardly any debt or no debt at all, okay? So that's, that's why the arrow ends in that 55 and plus category on debt, okay? And of course, I put it in red because normally we uh, uh, associate debt with um, being in the red. Green, uh, because green only means life or money. We talk about the main green. So, um, so savings and investments should be increasing over time. Uh, and uh, again, by the time you get 55 and over, uh, it should you know, um, be quite substantial. And that's what you begin, um, apart from any national insurance or any other pension schemes you may have, you should begin to, to either be living off those things, enjoying those um, assets that you've acquired or gifting them out to individuals. So that's how it, how, how it looks. So you'll see here, there's an intersection. At some point in time, uh, your, your, your debts and your savings will probably even out, okay? It may not necessarily be around age 45 to 54, um, but somewhere in this range, you know, they, 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 they may intersect. Again, that depends on, on the nature of your debts. So for example, if you have a mortgage, um, it'll follow you longer if you have, particularly if you have a um, 20 year mortgage or, or, or more. So a 20 year mortgage, if you get at age 25, um, it'll be, should be paid off at age 45, okay? Um, and so your, 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 your debt line will probably be more drastic. It'll probably be more down up in this area or lower. Okay, probably down in the 15,000 by the time you reach 45. So um, somewhere in the middle here, you, 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 um, it'll then drop, drop off somewhere up in here. Okay, um, if you have a 30 year uh, mortgage, um, then you're looking at um, age 55 or older for your mortgage being paid off. Okay, any questions on that before we, <clears throat> excuse me, move forward? I'm good. Okay, so um, let's look at um, income and debt service ratio calculations. Um, looking at the things we look at for in terms of salaries, gratuities, tips, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so let's let's look at that because we um, while we looked at calculating debt service ratios, um, we need to look at those incomes that we use, those, those, those uh, inputs, I'll call them, uh, those inputs um, that, that um, go towards uh, our servicing debt, that we use to service debt, okay? So the first thing we look at is salaried income, okay? And we use, and, and the first fill in the blank, uh, and again, um, if you don't, Get this by the time that I finish the screen, um, the PowerPoint presentations would, would come. Um, I'd prefer, um, you know, your attention to, to while we're um, having class interaction as opposed to spending time writing. Um, but if you can multitask uh, quite well, um, you, you know, it's up to you. So salary income, we use 100% of the primary job for each borrower. We use, and this is important because this is three parts. We use 100% salary income, we use 100% of salary of the person's primary job, because some people have more than one, for each borrower. Okay, so if um, you have like a husband and wife come in to borrow, okay, we use 100% of their primary job for each one of them. Okay, we got that? Yes, sir. Okay. The next category is gratuities or tips or bonuses. For gratuities, tips or bonuses, we use 50%. 50% of the 
of gratuities, tips, or bonuses. We use 50%. So in the case when we, when we looked at Sherry Roll, um, she made $9,000 in bonus. When we're going to calculate her um, debt service ratio, we only use 50% of that. So we don't use the 9,000. We use the um, we use 4,500 of that. And the reason for that is that get, get, um, gratuities, tips, and bonuses are not guaranteed. And so we're prepared to take a 50% risk on, on, on using them. Okay? Is that, is that understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, second jobs, not the primary job. If they have a second job, we use 50%, okay? The reason for that is similar to that of gratuities, tips, and bonuses, okay? We're not guaranteed that the person is gonna stay on that second job. If it becomes too much for them, it becomes too overwhelming because they got that first job and that first job becomes more demanding and or um, they have a household to run, um, they may not be able to, to do the the two jobs and run the house, the household. So they may have to stop that second job or the second job may stop. So again, uh, we use a similar principle as we use for gratuity steps and bonuses um, because those are not guaranteed. Not to say that your primary job is guaranteed because the people could fire you the same day, okay? But um, all things being um, equal, the primary job um, is, I guess you can call it fairly, guaranteed us. Again, none of us have a crystal ball, but um, the, the, these are the assumptions that we make, okay? So 100% of salary income for each person um, of their primary job, 50% of gratuity steps, bonuses, and 50% of second jobs, okay? Now, if they have rental income, we use 50%. Again, we use rental income, 50% of rental income because we want to allow for um, times when the, the units are not um, are not rented. There's no income coming for them from them. So what we do is we use 50% okay, of, of rental income. Okay? So everyone got that? Yes, sir. Uh, let me ask you some, Mr. Knowledge. I see here in the book, they were talking about slow periods and uh, in regards to how certain banks use. So we should generally look at using 50% rather than, for instance, 75%. Yes. Um, again, um, uh, You have to be, gui be, be guided by your bank's policy on it. Not all banks or financial institutions will say during the slow period, we, we'll use 75%. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. And the reason, the reason for, for saying using 75% uh, during, um, uh, during a, a slow, uh, a slow period is, um, uh, again, to, 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 to maximize um, to, to, to maximize um, the use of uh, those types of um, incomes. Okay, so um, it, is, it is thought that 75% during slow periods would be um, closer to 50% of um, the gratuities during um, peak periods. Okay, that, that, that is just one, one, one trend of thought on that. Okay. So thanks, thanks for bringing that to my, um, to my attention, to my attention. Okay. So um, commission income. Commission income, we use the average of the last three to five years earned commission but it must not exceed the current years. And, we, and, and, and we're gonna look at examples of these um, later on. Um, we're not gonna to get all to, them, to all of these tonight, um, but we'll do whatever we could to cover as, 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 as uh, many of them as we can um, um, in the time that's remaining, okay? So commissioned income we use 
on the average of the last three, three to five years earned the commission, but it must not exceed the current year, year's uh, commission. And, and uh, when we get to example, I'll explain that further, okay? Um, if the person is paid weekly, now remember I, I spoke about um, when we're looking at loan application, we're looking at everything being converted into monthly, in terms of being monthly, okay? So if the person is paid weekly, we need to multiply the amount by 52 and then divide by 12 to arrive at the monthly amount. What you should not do is multiply the weekly amount by four and say, well, you know, there's normally four weeks in a month, but there's some months that have five weeks. And if you, if you, if you do that, um, four, um, four, four times 12 is, is, is 48, okay? So you, all, you, you show that person by four weeks um, pay because 48 from 52 is four, okay? So you do not want to use, um, if they get paid um, weekly $250, you do not want to say 250 times four, no. You want to multiply that 250 by 52 um, weeks because they're 52 weeks in the year and then you divide by 12 to arrive at the monthly amount. And again, we can look at an, at, at an example and, 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 and show the difference between why we should do one and not the other, okay? If uh, the person is paid every two weeks and this has been put in here, although this happens in few cases, when the person is paid every two weeks, similarly, um, you, you do something, um, similarly as a weekly, in this case, what you do is because it's every two weeks rather than every week, you um, multiply that weekly, um, that two weeks salary, um, that by weekly salary by 26. Okay, because 26 and 26 will give you 52. Okay, and then you divide by 12 to arrive at the monthly amount. Is that, is that understood? Yes, sir. Okay, and like I said, we, we, we'll do an example so it'll become clearer if it isn't too clear right now. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is gratuities and tips. Okay. So if the average and um, if the annual um, average is uh, $530 monthly. So, so for example, if someone comes to you from Atlantis, Atlantis will say they, they make a base salary of X, Y, Z, um, and for the past 12 months or whatever, or they may say the average um, annual um, tips or gratuities um, is uh, 530 monthly. Or they may just say in the last 12 months, they've made um, say $7,000 in gratuities. So then you'll have to divide that by 12. Okay, to get the monthly amount. So if they get 7,000 a month, I mean, 7,000 a year, um, you divide that by 12 to get what the monthly amount is. Okay, so of that monthly amount, then what you do is you divide it by two or multiply it by 50%, which gives you $265 per month, okay? So while they may get $530 in tips or gratuities, um, we only use half of that or 50% of that, which is $265 in this example, okay? Is that understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So now let's look at rental income. Okay. And this is if, if no unit is owner occupied. Okay. So if they have a duplex and they do not live in one of the units, they have their own house somewhere else or next door, but it's not, they do not live in the duplex. Okay. Um, and they get $700 per month um, per unit. That's two units. So that's two times $700 they get, which is $1,400. But because we only use 50% of that income, we divide it by two or multiply 1,400 by 50% and we get $700. Okay, everyone understands that? Yes, sir. Okay. If it's a triplex, 
and no unit is owner occupied. And they get $700 per unit. Then you multiply it by three, 700 times three. That gives you $2,100 per month. But again, we only use 50% of that $2,100, which gives us 1,050. Everyone sees that? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, th those two scenarios are if no unit is owner occupied. What do we do if one of the units is owner occupied? I'm glad you asked the question. If one unit is owner occupied, um, let's say using the same example as above, um, you use 50% of $700 of one unit because you have to, they only get $700 from one unit because they're living in one unit, okay? So they ain't getting $1,400 no more. They only get $700. So they only, if they only get $700 for that one unit, you then, div you then divide that um, $700 by two or multiply by 50%. Um, and that gives you um, $350. We, we, we all understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. If it's a triplex and they live in one of the units, okay, you only get they're only getting income from two of those units. So two times 700 is fourteen hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and so then we'll use 50% of that fourteen hundred dollars. So therefore we only use seven hundred dollars of that fourteen hundred dollars. Is that is that understood? Yes, sir. It's going to take okay. some time to spend with it, but I think I get it. Okay. Any anyone else um, have problems with it, or is okay with everyone else? Good. I'm good. Okay. All righty. So let's move now to commission income. Okay, commission income. Remember um, back here. Sorry, you said commission income. Use the average of the last three to five years, earn commission, but must not exceed the current years, okay? So here we go. So we have commission income. So um, the years in, under review are, and, and, and this was a loan that we, we, we were probably in 2020. Um, so we were looking at, um, so we, we would look at um, the last three years, the most three recent years, which would have been 2017, 2018, and 2019. In 2017, the person earned $31,000 in commission. Um, in 2018, they earned $32,000 in commission. 2019, they earned $33,000 in commission, okay? So when we add the three of those up, they come to 96,000 um, total. We got that? Yes, sir, I see it. Okay. So we said that we use the average of the commission income for the last one to three years, or you know, you you um, your bank may want four, five, six years, okay. Um, but the the minimum would be three years, okay. Um, so we use um, so the, the average is actually thirty two, thirty two thousand. It works out to thirty two thousand, which is what is earned in twenty eighteen, okay. Um, so bearing with me mind, in mind what he says, you use the average, but it must, it must not exceed um, the most recent year or current year. What is the amount of the most recent or current year? 33,000. 33,000, okay. And this is 32,000. So can we use this or, or not? Yes, we can, because it doesn't exceed uh, the previous year of 33,000 is 32K. Yes, okay, so we can use this, okay? Now let's look at um, another scenario, okay? We have the figures kind of jumbled in, right? We mixed them up a bit. So 2017, the first year under review is 32,000. The second year under review is 33,000. 
The third or current um, uh, or most recent is 31,000. Um, that also adds up to 96,000. The average is 32,000. Do we use 32,000 in this instance? No. Why, why not? Because it exceeds the current year. Because it exceeds the current, okay? So, the, and the current is 31,000. So, um, we would use, um, in, in, in this instance, instead of using 32,000, we'll use um, 31,000 as, as, as the benchmark for the income, okay? Any questions on that before we move further? Okay, so let's look at weekly salaries. Okay. Now, if the weekly salary is $400, then remember what I said, we multiply by 52 because there are 52 weeks in the year. So when we multiply that 400 by 52, we get 20,800. That gives you the annual amount. Then we divide the 20,800, that total by 12 months in the year, because you have 12 months in the year. And that gives us $1,733.33 monthly. What, what amount would we get monthly What amount would we get monthly if we um, simply multiplied 400 by four? Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred, sir. $1,600. Okay. So, so right off the top, you can see that there's a difference, right? Of about $133 and, and cents, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So that is why you do not want um, to simply multiply the weekly amount, um, the, the, the weekly amount by four, you know, under the assumption that there are four, there are four, um, uh, there are four weeks in a month. Because when you multiply that by um, twelve, you know, again, four twelves are forty-eight, but they're actually fifty-two weeks in the year. So you, um, you will deflate the client's income, in this case, by $133. Um, and that could negatively impact their debt service ratio. OK? So use this, not this. Use this, not this. You got it? Yes, sir. OK. I, I employed something that my eye doctor does with me, right? Can you see better this or that? This or that, okay? Which, which, which can you see better, okay? This or that? But this is the one that you want to use, okay? I'm going to emphasize that because um, uh, there hasn't been a class where, there has, where there's been one student who regardless of me saying that, still does by four. So I am hoping that you'll be the first class um, that I have where everyone uses the correct method, okay? So um, you all make history and be the first class that um, no one uses the wrong method, okay? So um, again, I'm gonna look at bi-weekly quickly. Um, because um, and I will look at buy quickly, quickly because well one we, we're out of time and then two um, it is hardly used. Okay, but if the biweekly salary and let's say every two weeks they make eight hundred dollars, then what you do you multiply by twenty six because there are twenty six pay periods in the year, and again you, multi you multiply twenty six by two you get fifty two um, weeks. Um, then um, you divide that 20,800 by 12, which will give you your $1,733 
monthly okay everyone understands that yes sir okay so um on monday on tuesday rather on tuesday we will look at uh, monthly commitments um, we'll start with rent payments um uh again we'll, we'll look at if a loan is being paid off in four months or less um that's that's optional as i said earlier because some some banks um don't utilize that so we won't get into that um too much um and then we'll be looking at determining uh, the monthly credit card com commitments um where we use the limit again three percent three between three and five percent of the credit limit despite the outstanding balance. So when we're determining the credit card commitments, unlike when we're looking at the, state, the statement of affairs, the statement of affairs, we want the loan balance, okay? Um, but when we're determining the credit card monthly commitments, we look at the limit, okay? And we'll um, be looking at why, why we look at the limit rather than the balance, okay? And then of course, we will look at um, income confirmations for um, the, the employed person as well as the self-employed person. Okay, so um, we ended here um, for the night. Um, have a good night. Um, I'm going to make that correction with that um, TDSR, CDSR, where the percentages was 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 switched, and I will um, um, I will um, send uh, send it up to you afterwards. Also, I will um, uh, look at uh, doing your um, the, the 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 graded papers differently, and send that to you again. That probably won't happen until tomorrow. And then the third thing is I will uh, send you a um, a homework assignment on doing um, that that debt service, um, not a debt service, the debt service, the the net worth statement. Um, so you can get a little bit more practice on 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 doing that. Um, that'll be the only item um, for homework that you that you will get. Okay, that's um, this thing here we looked at. Let me go back. Yeah, this here that we did for Benjamin Bain. That will be due for Tuesday as well. That'll be due for that'll be for do for Tuesday. Yes. Okay. That that'll, that'll be the only be thing. That that'll be the only thing that you get for homework. Sorry. Would you be sending that tonight? Yes, yes, I'll be sending. Okay. I'll be sending it tonight with the with the corrected PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No, sir. Okay. Well, um, that haven't been said. Um, thank you all very much for your attention. Have a good night. Good rest of the week. Um, and enjoy your holy, your holy weekend. Mr. Nottage, one question before sure. we go. Um, the classwork assignment that we did just now, do we have to send that to you or no? No, no, that, that, um, we, we're going to do some, the in-class ones, no. Um, okay. We, we, we do those um, for no grade, just in, in, in class to, to help us, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good night. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night, all.
thing that I have. 